This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 158, What a Catholic Nun Knows About Storytelling and a Marketing Guru Doesn't. Hello and welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you attract and retain business through the power of quality content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is January 21st, 2016. Hello, hello, or as we say in Texas, howdy, and thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. Just a reminder, we are live on iTunes and on Stitcher, so if you're listening to this episode on the blog, you can click on over and subscribe. And of course, if you use a different app for your podcast listening pleasure, we also have an RSS feed, and I will provide that link in the blog post. To learn more about content marketing, I invite you to download our free audio, Five Things You Must Know About Content Marketing. You can grab your very own copy at contentmarketingaudio.com. I want to send a shout out to my new friend Monica in India. We connected on Twitter recently and she was kind enough to tell me how much she enjoys this podcast. Well, Monica, we are thrilled to have thrilled to have you in our happy little community and we hope you keep coming back. Also, I want to wish a very happy birthday to drumroll please. The Content Marketing Podcast. Yes, it was three years ago this month in January 2013 that our very first episode hit the airwaves or what's the internet equivalent? The web waves? The interwaves? Whatever. Our very first episode dropped three years ago this month. And I want to send a heartfelt thank you to everyone who is listening right now. Thank you to all who have been with us from the beginning and to everyone who has joined our happy little crew along the way. As long as you keep showing up, we will keep delivering the good stuff. Okay, last week we took a look at the one thing we must all focus in 2016, and that is quality and why this is the year to raise the bar for our own content marketing. If you happen to miss that episode, feel free to check it out on iTunes or Stitcher or via the RSS feed. This week I'm sharing a tale of two speakers, a Catholic nun and a marketing guru, only one of whom knows something about storytelling. But first, it's time to check in with our news feed for this week's rundown of news you can use. Well, we've got not one but two stories out of Twitter in this week's news feed. First of all, big news for those of you who are Periscopers. Twitter has announced that Periscope broadcasts will now appear live in Twitter feeds on iOS devices. So on your um, on your iPhone and your iPad, you will, as you look through your news feed, you will see those Periscope broadcasts appearing live instead of just a link to Periscope. So people will no longer have to click away from Twitter to see your broadcast. And this is great news. Um, like I said, if you are active on Periscope, it's a great way to broaden your audience because your the people who see that post, who see that tweet on Twitter, don't have to take the extra action to click over to Periscope. They'll be able to see your content right there in their Twitter feed. Um, again, that is currently only for iOS devices, so Apple um, iPhone and iPad, but there are plans to roll it out to Android very, very shortly. Okay, another bit of news out of Twitter. This is pretty cool for um, if you have made a decision to amp up your Twitter skills in 2016. In 20, 2016, 2016, this is. Um, be sure to listen up. Twitter has opened up its Twitter flight school to everyone. Now, have you never heard of Twitter flight school? I had not either, believe it or not. Uh, Twitter flight school launched in 2014 to help agencies learn how to build buzz, launch products, drive sales, and instantly, instantly connect with a highly engaged audience on Twitter. Well, what happened was the response was so positive that Twitter has decided to open this, uh, this school up to non-agency marketers, and it includes insights, research, in-depth product tutorials, and case studies. Now, I have not yet explored it myself, but it sure sounds pretty darn cool. To sign up for your free account, I assume it's free, they didn't mention it, but 
I would think they would tell me if it weren't. Um, anyway, to sign up, go to twitterflightschool.com, and that's F-L-I-G-H-T, twitterflightschool.com, and uh, keep me posted. Let me know what you think. Okay, our content hit of the week is another Whiteboard Friday. Love those Whiteboard Fridays by Rand Fishkin over at Moz. This one is called Content Marketing Tips for B2B Organizations. And... um. I just love these whiteboard Fridays, and if you're not familiar with them, Moz is a um, is an SEO thought leader, and as such, they share a lot of great stuff about content marketing as well. And in this one, Rand shares some very interesting insights on how content figures into the B two B sales funnel. And if you checked out our webinar last year about B two B content marketing, we focused a lot on that sales funnel as well because it's very different in the B two B world. You've got multiple different audiences at multiple different levels. So if you are a B2B marketer and you can carve out about 14 minutes for a very engaging presentation, I do invite you to check it out. It's well worth the time investment and I will provide a link on the in the blog post for this episode. Okay, that's it for this week's update. If you stumble across something you think might be of interest to your fellow content marketers, please shoot it on over to us so that we can share. Now it's time for this week's Spotlight segment, What a Catholic Nun Knows About Storytelling and a Marketing Guru Doesn't. Today I want to share a tale of two speakers, one of whom understands the storyteller's craft and the other of whom, let's say they have some work to do. So last Sunday I was sitting in Mass. I'd gone to 930 Mass and in the Catholic Church we have what we call Mission Sundays. These are designated Sundays when, instead of the priest giving a homily, a representative from a missionary order, usually a sister, comes up and talks about their work and asks for support. Um, translation, money, right? So um, <clears throat> so these happen on a fairly regular basis, and I have to say they're they're not usually what you would call stellar presentations. You know, the sisters are very sweet. They're very, um, you know, it comes from the heart. They're very passionate about what they're doing, but they're not, you know, they're not necessarily professional speakers. This isn't their full-time job. And um, God bless them. They have to ask for money, which I, I do not envy. So this past Sunday, when the priest announced that this was a mission Sunday, and we were going to have one of the sisters come up and, and talk to us, you can kind of feel people settling in for a, I don't want to say to be bored, but just to kind of settle in and say, okay, this next, you know, eight to 10 minutes, we're going to, we're going to hear a, an appeal and, you know, it's, it's not going to be fireworks. Um, that is when we met Sister Lisa. Okay. Almost as soon as she walked up to the Ambo and opened her mouth, Sister Lisa made it clear that this was not going to be your typical Mission Sunday presentation, okay? I will say I would put Sister Lisa up against any stand-up comedian or professional speaker working the circuit today. She was absolutely phenomenal. So um, <clears throat> Sister Lisa, actually her name is Sister Lisa Valentini, and she does have, a, there is a YouTube video out there with, with, one, with her speaking. Um, she is a little Italian-American nun from Philadelphia. Now, just a note to our international audience, about about Phil, Philadelphians. Um, if you've heard about New Jersey and the whole New Jersey attitude, the kind of tough talk and you don't know, don't give a hang what you think kind of culture, to a certain extent, that same stereotype extends to Philadelphia or or Philly as the as the natives call it. You know that whole um, that whole kind of tough talking attitude is is part of the part of the. Um, part of our perception of Philly culture um, in the same way as, you know, Texas culture means we all wear cowboy boots and ride horses. You know, it's a, it's a stereotype, but it does have some, um, at least in my experience, does have, there is some truth to it. So that whole Philly attitude was kind of infused through her entire talk. And that was part of what made her so engaging. She was funny, she was relatable, and she knew how to rock a story. And I'm reminded of um, of the, the the book story by oh my gosh what is his name I forget his name but it's uh, it's a book about screenwriting and he keeps coming back to the phrase a good story well told 
And yes, we have to have good stories, but we have to know how to tell them well if they're going to click with our audience. And Sister Lisa, goodness gracious, she knew how to tell a story. She told the story about how she first became a, first became a nun, how her order was founded, um, wonderful stories of what they're doing around the world. And she had this entire congregation, um, probably about 300 people, just hanging on her every word. Just it was she was absolutely captivating. And, you know, when mass finished and I got into my car to leave, I realized that mass had gone on for an hour and a half, which means she probably spoke for 25 minutes. Now, any any priest who tries to give a 25 minute homily is in real danger of being run out of town on a reel. But I was I was astonished to, to realize how long she actually spoke. And it seemed like no time at all. She was that engaging. So that was my experience on Sunday. Fast forward to Tuesday of this week, and I was sitting not in a church pew, but at a table at a Houston restaurant at 7.30 in the morning. I was attending a breakfast seminar that was sponsored by a a local marketing organization to which I belong. And so we, we got our breakfast and our coffee, and we're sitting there, and the president of the organization gets up to introduce the speaker. And this speaker had one of those just stellar biographies. He's a professional speaker. He's a best-selling author. He's won awards. He's done a TED Talk, blah, blah, blah. And then the speaker took the stage or the area of the restaurant that served as the stage. And within about two minutes, almost every person in the audience was checking email. I kid you not. I know because I was sitting towards the back and I could see all the smartphone screens and all the tablets and all the computer screens in front of me. And I saw a lot of email apps and I saw a lot of Facebooking going on and I saw a lot of texting apps. Why? Because for this, for the first 20 minutes of this presentation, this speaker's sole purpose was to talk about himself himself and his company. He talked about challenges he faced as a kid. He talked about his first foray into the corporate world, how he founded his business, how he grew his business, how some other dude called him one day and asked him if he'd be interested in a merger. So that was the next phase of the business and on and on and on for 20 minutes. And none of this had anything to do with the topic that we were all there to learn more about. And here's the funny thing. So after the speaker, this, this, you know, stellar speaker, quote unquote, um, after his little oral biography, uh, he handed the stage over to his colleague who was there to cover the real meat of the presentation. But after 20 minutes of hearing this first guy drone on and on about himself and his company, I was already tuned out. Okay, this this second speaker could have been giving the secret to life, the universe and everything, but it was not going to get through because I had checked out and... Um, I don't know what it would have taken to get me back, but you know, that's what happens when, when, when that opening kind of goes flat. So my point is, this is not, of course, this is not a podcast about public speaking, but we do talk a lot about storytelling because storytelling is such a vital component of content marketing. Excuse me. So as I was driving home from this event on Tuesday, I I started thinking, I made a mental comparison between this marketing guru and Sister Lisa, because Sister Lisa talked about herself as well. It it wasn't the whole time, but, you know, she shared her story about how she became a nun. She shared the story about how her order got started, shared stories about what they're doing. What was it, I pondered, what was it about this Catholic nun's appeal for um, for funding that left me wanting more? And what was it about this marketing guru's presentation that made me want to carve my eyeballs out with a spork? What, in other words, what was Sister Lisa's secret? And looking back on her talk, I can really pick out three things that made her such a superior storyteller to this marketing dude. Um, number one, She made us laugh with self-effacing humor. She laughed at herself and 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 her and the the organization she represented, um, but mostly laughed at herself. And she brought us in to share the joke with her. And she she kind of made fun of her Philly attitude and her her little Philly accent. Um, For example, she started a story with. 
something like, yeah, one day I was walking down the hall minding my own business, which was a switch because I'm usually minding everybody else's business. And that gave us all a good laugh. And it just it was very endearing to to see her, you know, speaking to this this huge congregation and making fun of herself a little bit. Um, so that was the first thing. The second thing was she was relatable. Now, most of us can find quite little to relate to in the journey of a Catholic nun. It's, it's a very unique life path. But she made it work. She made it work. She made her story relatable. Um, for example, she was sharing the story about how she found her vocation, um, sharing the story about how one of the sisters at her high school asked her one day if she had ever considered religious life. And... Um, and she said it was something like this. And I said very, um, very courteously and very respectfully in my unique Philly way, no. <laughs> but she, and she continued. She said afterwards, you ever get a song stuck in your head and it just won't leave you alone? That was how her question stuck with me, unquote. That's not, not a direct quote, but you get the idea. So she was able to relate certain points in the story she was telling with things we can all relate to. Now, most of us, myself included, in, through nine years of Catholic school, we're, have never been asked if we would consider religious life. But we've all had that experience of getting a song stuck in your head, right? And, um, and she was able to make that touch point, to make this, this one little snippet of her life relatable to the rest of us. The third thing that she did that made her presentation so captivating was she used dialogue that was infused with flavor. And it, another story she related, she talked about how she started taking high school groups down to the Dominican Republic to do, um, to do mission work. And she shared the story about how she was visiting a high school in Philadelphia excuse me, Philly, and this group of girls came up to her after, afterwards and said, we really want to get involved. We want to really want to do mission work. And she said, okay, that's great. Go to this website. There are many opportunities available. You can find the one that's right for you. And they said, no, sister, we want to come with you. And she said, um, she said, no, <laughs> in her usual Philly way. And she said, they put their hands on their hips and they said, hey, sister, it's your job. Okay, that was and and sharing that that little micro piece of life in dialogue rather than trying to relate it. Um, it just brought the story alive because she was able to not only make dialogue a part of that storytelling, but to infuse it with the with the accent and the attitude that went along with it. And she did that all throughout her presentation. It was just absolutely glorious. So. What can we, as content marketers, learn from Sister Lisa? If we're going to be as superb a storyteller as she is, we need to, number one, be able to laugh at ourselves and invite the audience to to join in our, our, our little self-mockery. We don't need to get, be overboard and get, get really, really down on ourselves. We certainly don't want to make ourselves look unprofessional. But, you know, a little a little jibe here and there, a little, a little wink, wink, a little elbow to show that we don't take ourselves too seriously is very endearing to an audience, especially when you're sharing the story of your company. You know, if you go to so many about us pages, it's all these big, lofty. Oh, this you know, this impressive person decided to do this one day, and then this happened, and it's it's like, you know, it's like something that would have taken place up on Mount Olympus. But if you can bring it down and say, hey, you know, we're human too. We can laugh at ourselves. We've done some goofy stuff. We can, you know, we we've been goofy at some points, and and be able to. Let the audience in on your joke, laughing at your own self. That is incredibly endearing, and that gets major points for connecting with your audience. The second thing we can do is to be relatable. Bring the audience in by highlighting the common ground and establishing a connection between us. And that's something that this marketing guru who spoke on Tuesday just just did not do. His, his story was completely unrelatable. Um, and he seemed like a nice guy. I will say, it's not like he got up there and was, was a pompous ass. He was, seemed like a nice guy, very passionate about what he does. He just, you know, he just didn't have that relatability. So as you are putting together your stories, think about your audience and think about those experiences that we can all relate to or something that they can relate to from their life. And the example like Sister Lisa brought in that, you know, how you get that song stuck in your head kind of thing. Think about common ground, points of 
points of common experience where you can bring the audience in and put yourselves on the same level and just be relatable and highlight your your similarities rather than your differences. And then the third thing we need to do is bring our stories to life. And dialogue is such a beautiful way to do this. Have you ever been reading along, excuse me, have you ever been reading along, um, say you're reading a chapter in a novel and you go through paragraph after paragraph of um, description, just description of, of scenery or, or something going on, and then you get to the dialogue and you're like, oh, yes. You ever you ever done that when you read a book? We, we are hard, hardwired for dialogue. We love dialogue. It, it engages us. It moves the story along. It's got a much higher energy level than just description. So as you're putting your stories together, go beyond, well, he said this, then I said this, then he told me that, and really get, 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 into, this, get into the conversation. Actually create the dialogue. It doesn't have to be word for word. You can take a little artistic license, but put some dialogue in your stories and then bring in some flavor and some attitude. Like, for example, if one of the characters in this scene is a, is a dyed in the wool Texan, then, you know, y'all can infuse it with some, um, some, of, some of his or her accent and some of those little phrases that we all use. Like, you know, man, she was sweating like a whore in church. Okay. I'll tell you what. Um, that's W H U T. Um, and, and have fun with it. Even if you are, even if it's just a written piece, you know, you can infuse some flavor, have some fun with the spelling, try to communicate, um, accents or, or use, um, little folksy sayings that people use really bring these characters to life in your dialogue. And it's really going to take the energy level of your story to a whole new level. So that is my take on what a Catholic nun knows about storytelling and a marketing guru doesn't. If you have any questions or if y'all want to add to the conversation, I would love to hear from you. And the best way to reach me is through my website, Resonance content.com. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. We just talked a little bit about how dialogue can bring stories to life. Another trick that you can use is to set the scene. So if you come to a pivotal scene in the story that you're telling, what you can do is slow it down, slow it way, way down and treat it like a movie scene. Imagine that you are creating a scene for a movie. For example, you might be riding along your story and the, the event that you come to is, well, then I got fired. Okay, if that's a pivotal point, back it up and, and set the scene. Create a movie scene. You could say, instead of, then I got fired, you could say, one Friday afternoon, I was wrapping up for the weekend, feeling pretty good, ready to head out to the mountains for some R&R. &R. I had just hit send on the email to my husband, telling him I'd be home in 20 minutes. And then my office phone rang. And take it from there. Now, you don't want to get too bogged down in details. You don't want to give every single detail of every little scene that makes up your story. Sometimes you do need to hit fast forward and kind of gloss over things. But for those pivotal scenes, those pivotal events, you do want to create some intrigue. So liven it up, set the scene. What, what were the sights, were the, were the sounds, were the smells, add some dialogue. And by setting the scene and inviting your audience to join you in it, you will elevate your story to a new level and hold your audience's attention all the way to the end. <music> Okay, campers, that's it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or via our RSS feed. And if you really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review on iTunes. I would so appreciate it. Also, if you want to learn more about content marketing, I invite you to download our free resource, Five Things You Must Know About Content Marketing. You can get your very own copy at contentmarketingaudio.com. As always, I like to leave you with a quote, and today's comes from, uh, comes from another tremendous talent that the world lost just last week. I'm talking, of course, about Alan Rickman. He once said, quote, I do take my work seriously, and the way to do that is not to take yourself too seriously, unquote. Rest in peace, Alan Rickman.
Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing. Thank you again for listening, and we will see you again next week. Take care.